Hi, wonderful fourth graders. Um, I'm going to read chapter two and chapter three of Charlotte's Web. Um, and just, and then you can work on um, thinking about the story elements um, of chapters one, chapter two, and chapter three. Um, and in case, just to give you a little heads up, story elements are, in case you're not remembering, setting, theme, characters, uh, plot and problem and solution. So um, that's what I want you to be thinking about, but also just be enjoying the story. So Charlotte's Web, chapter two and chapter three, when we left off, she had just gone to, Fern had just gone to school um, after her dad gave her Wilbur, her pig, to take care of. So this is chapter two. Chapter two is called Wilbur. Fern loved Wilbur more than anything. She loved to stroke him, to feed him, to put him to bed. Every morning, as soon as she got up, she warmed his milk, tied his bib on, and held the bottle for him. Every afternoon, when the school bus stopped in front of her house, she jumped out and ran to the kitchen to fix another bottle for him. She fed him again at supper time, and again just before going to bed. Mr. Arable gave him a feeding around noontime each day, when Fern was away in school, Wilbur loved his milk, and he was never happier than when Fern was warming up a bottle for him. He would stand and gaze up at her with adoring eyes. Adoring means just with lots of love. For the, next, for the first few days of his life, Wilbur was allowed to live in a box near the stove in the kitchen. Then when Ms. Ar Mrs. Arabelle complained, he was moved to a bigger box in the woodshed. At two weeks of age, he was moved outdoors. It was as apple blossom time, and the days were getting warmer. Mr. Arable fixed a small yard, especially for Wilbur, under an apple tree, and gave him a large wooden box full of straw, with the doorway cut in it so he could walk in and out as he pleased. Won't he be cold at night, asked Fern. No, said her father, you watch and see what he does. Carrying a bottle of milk, Fern sat down under the apple tree inside the yard. Wilbur ran to her, and she held the bottle for him while he sucked. was shut up inside the yard. But as soon as she got home in the afternoon, she'd take him out and he'd follow her around the place. If she went into the house, Wilbur went too. If she went upstairs, Wilbur would wait at the bottom step until she came again. If she took her doll for a walk in the doll carriage, Wilbur followed along. Sometimes on these journeys, Wilbur would get tired and Fern would pick him up and put him in the carriage alongside the doll. He liked this, and if he was very tired, he would close his eyes and go to sleep under the doll's blanket. He looked cute when his eyes were closed because his lashes were long. The doll would close her eyes too, and Fern would wheel the carriage very slowly and smoothly so as not to wake her, inf her infants. There's a picture of that. One warm afternoon, Fern and Avery put on bathing suits and went down to the brook for a swim. The brook is like a little um, uh, stream. Wilbur tugged along at Fern's heel, tagged along at Fern's heels. When she waded into the brook, Wilbur waded in with her. He found the water quite cold. Too cold.
When he was five, year, five weeks old, Mr. Arable said he was now a big enough to sell, and he'd have to be sold. Fern broke down and wept. But her father was firm about it. Wilbur's appetite had increased. He was beginning to eat scraps of food in addition to milk. Mr. Arable was not willing to provide for him any longer. He had already sold Wilbur's ten brothers and sisters. He's got to go, Fern, he said. You have had your fun raising a baby pig, but Wilbur's not a baby any longer, and he's got to be sold. Call up the Zuckermans, suggested Mrs. Arable to Fern. Your Uncle Homer sometimes raises a pig, and if Wilbur goes to live, goes, goes there to live, you can walk down the road and visit him as often as you like. How much money should I ask for him, Fern wanted to know. Well, her father said, he's a runt. Runt means he was the smallest pig in the whole litter of all the pigs. Tell your Uncle Homer you've got a pig you'll sell for six dollars and see what he says. It was soon arranged. Fern phoned and got her, um, her Aunt Edith and her Aunt Edith Hall. Chapter 3, Escape. The barn was very large. It was very old. It smelled of hay and it smelled of manure. It smelled of the perspiration of tired horses. Perspiration is the sweat. The perspiration of tired horses and the wonderful sweet breath of patient cows. It often had a sort of peaceful smell as though nothing bad could happen ever again in the world. It smelled of grain and of harnesses, dressing, and of axle grease and rubber boots and new rope. And whenever a cat was given a fish head to eat, the barn would smell of fish. But mostly it smelled of hay, for there was always hay in the great loft up overhead. And there was always hay being pitched down onto the cows and horses and the sheep. The barn was pleasantly warm in winter when the animals spent most of their time indoors, and it was pleasantly cool in summer when the big doors stood wide open to the breeze. The barn had stalls on the main floor for the workhorses. Stalls are little individual places for the horses. Tie-ups on the main floor for the cow, and sheepfold down below for the sheep, and a pig pen down below for Wilbur. And it was full of all sorts of things that you'll find in barns. Ladders, grindstones, pitchforks, monkey wrenches, scythes, lawn mowers, snow shovels, ax handles, milk pails, water buckets, empty grain sacks, and rusty rat traps. It was a kind of barn that swallows, that's a kind of bird, like to build their nests in. It was the kind of barn Wilbur, eating out of his pig trough. Fern came almost every day to visit him. She found an old milking stool that had been discarded, that means put aside, and she placed the stool in the sheepfold next to Wilbur's pen. So the sheepfold is like where the sheep live. Here she sat quietly during the long afternoons, thinking, listening, and watching Wilbur. The sheep soon got to know and trust her and that's a picture of her sitting on her stool and the sheep can see the sheep behind her. The sheep soon got to know her and trust her. So did the geese who lived with the sheep. All the animals trusted her. She was so quiet and friendly. Mr. Zuckerman did not allow her to take Wilbur out and he did not allow her to get into the pig pen. 
but she told Fern, but he told Fern that she could sit on the stool and watch Wilbur as long as she wanted to. It made her happy just to be near the pig, and it made Wilbur happy to know that she was sitting right there, right outside his pig pen. But he never. He found a small strip of potato skin and ate it. His back itched, so he leaned against the fence and rubbed the boards. When he tired of this, he walked indoors, climbed to the top of the manure pile, and sat down. He didn't feel like going to sleep. He didn't feel like digging. He was tired of standing still and tired of lying down. I'm less than two months old and I'm tired of living. That's what he said. He walked out to the yard again. When I'm out here, he said, there's no place to go but in. When I'm indoors, there's no place to go but out in the yard. That's where you're wrong, my friend, my friend, said a voice. Wilbur looked through the fence and saw the goose standing there. You don't have to say that dirty little, dirty little, dirty little yard, said the goose, who talked rather fast. One of the boards is loose. Push it. Push, push, push. Push on it. Push. Come out. What, said Wilbur, say it slower. At, 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 at the risk of repeating myself, said the goose, I suggest that you come out. It's wonderful out here. Did you say the board was loose? That I did, that I did, said, I, said the goose. Wilbur. fence, and that means strange, with nothing between him and the big world. Where do you think I'd better go? Anywhere you like, anywhere you like, said the goose. Go down through the orchard, root up the sod, go down to the garden, dig up the radishes, root up everything, eat grass, look for corn, look for oats, run over, skip and dance, jump on the prance, go in the orchard and stroll in the woods. The world's a wonderful place when you're young. I can see that, replied Wilbur. He gave a jump in the air and twirled, ran a few steps, stopped, and looked all around. He sniffed the smells of the afternoon and then set off walking down through the orchard. Passing in the shade of an apple tree, he put his strong snout into the ground and began pushing and digging and rooting. He felt very happy. He had plowed up quite a piece of ground before anyone noticed him. Mrs. Zuckerman was the first to see him. She saw him from the kitchen and she immediately shouted for the men. Homer, she cried, pigs out, Lurvy, pigs out. Lurvy, the hired man, heard the noise and came up from the asparagus patch where he was pulling weeds. Everybody walked toward Wilbur and Wilbur didn't know what to do. The woods seemed a long way off. Anyway, he had never been down there in the woods and he wasn't sure he was going to like it. Get around him, Lurvy, said Mr. Zuckerman, and I'll drive him toward the barn. And take it easy, don't rush him. I'll go get a bucket of slops. Slops is like what they would feed the pig. The news of Wilbur's escape spread rapidly among the animals on the place. Whenever a creature broke loose on Zuckerman's farm, the event was of great interest to the others. The goose shouted to the nearest cow that Wilbur was free, and soon all the cows knew. 
Then one of the cows told one of the sheep, and soon all the sheep knew. Lambs learned about it from their mothers. Horses in their stalls in the barn pricked up their ears when they heard the goose hollering, and soon the horses had caught on to what was happening. Wilbur's out, they said. Every animal stirred and lifted its head and became excited to know that one of his friends had got Up on him from the other side. Mrs. Zuckerman stood ready to head him off if he started for the garden. And now Mr. Zuckerman was coming down toward him carrying a pail. This is really awful, thought Wilbur. Why doesn't Fern come? He began to cry. The goose took command and began to give orders. Don't just stand there, Wilbur. Dodge about, dodge about cried the goose. Skip around, run, run toward me, slip in, slip out, in, out, in, out, make for the woods, twist, turn. The cocker spaniel sprang from Wilbur's hind leg. Wilbur jumped up and ran. Lurvy reached out and grabbed. Mr. Zuckerman screamed at Lurvy. The goose cheered for Wilbur. Wilbur dodged between Lurvy's legs. Lurvy missed. Wilbur, L Lurvy missed Wilbur and grabbed the spaniel instead. <laughs> Nicely done, nicely done, cried the goose. Try it again, try it again. Run downhill, suggested the cows. Run toward me, yelled the gander. Run uphill, cried the sheep. Turn and twist, honked the goose. Jump and dance, said the rooster. Here's a picture of all. giving him, but he couldn't run downhill and uphill at the same time. He couldn't turn and twist when he was jumping and dancing. He was crying so hard he could barely see anything that was happening. After all, Wilbur was a very young pig. Not much more than a baby, really. He wished Fern were there to take him in her arms and comfort him. When he looked up and saw Mr. Zuckerman standing quite close to him, holding a pale of warm slops, he felt relieved. He lifted his nose and sniffed. The smell was delicious. Warm milk, potato skins, wheat middlings, Kellogg's cornflakes, and popover left from the Zuckerman's breakfast. Come pig, said Mr. Zuckerman tapping the pail. Come pig. Wilbur took a step toward the pail. No, 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 said the goose. It's the old pail trick. Wilbur, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. He's trying to lure you back into captivity. He's appealing to your stomach. Wilbur didn't care. The food smelled appetizing. He took another step toward the pail. When Mr. Zuckerman reached the pig pen, he climbed over the fence and poured the slops onto the trough. Then he pulled the loose board away from the fence so that there was a wide hole for Wilbur to walk through. Reconsider, reconsider, that means to think again, cried the goose. Wilbur paid no attention. He stepped through the fence into his yard. He walked to the trough and took a long drink of slops sucking in the milk hungrily and chewing the popover. A popover is like a um, kind of bread. It was good to be home again. While Wilbur ate, Lurvy fetched a hammer and some eight penny nails and nailed the board in place. Then he and Mr. Zuckerman leaned lazily on the fence and Mr. Zuckerman scratched Wilbur's back with a stick. He's quite a pig, said Lurvy. 
Yes, he'll make a good pig, said Mr. Zuckerman. Wilbur heard the words of praise. He felt warm milk inside his stomach. He felt the pleasant rubbing of the stick along his itchy back. and fill out some of that information. This story is so much fun. Um, remember you were thinking about, you're gonna write about what the setting, the theme, the characters, try and find three characters, and the plot, maybe three things that happened in those two chapters, and the problem and solution. Um, that you that were in was in that were in the chapters that we just read about. Okay, have fun, and I can't wait to see your work. Next, see you next time.